All right. So at this point, you should have completed the exercises one through four. You should have four different map frames, one WGS 1984, one Canada Lambert, one Vancouver UTM, and one population density. You can go ahead and hit the X on this Vancouver UTM. We don't need it anymore. Now you'll note over here in this catalog pane, you've got this maps tab. So your maps don't actually go away. If you accidentally close one, it's easy enough to get it back. Just double click and open it back up. So your population density map should look like this, but if you didn't set the projection, that's, uh, if you didn't change the projection to hours, that's totally fine. So we're actually going to make a copy of this. So right click on it and go copy and then just in maps, just click paste. So you'll have population density one and population density two. Let's rename one of these. If you just double click a couple times, we'll open up. We'll call this one Canada Albers. And we'll call this one uh, web. So you want to make sure that you've got both of those open, Canada Albers and Web Mercator. In the Canada Albers one, just right click and remove the Web Mercator projection. In the Web Mercator one, make sure that it's in the proper projection. So if you didn't set it to Albers, this would be opposite for you. But uh, first we can remove this Albers one. And then we want to set the coordinate system. So the easiest way to do this is properties, coordinate systems. And then um, under layers, it'll always tell you the coordinate systems of the different layers you have. So this one pops up, you just click OK, and you see how it changes. So now you should have country of Canada displayed in four different ways. An unprojected version in just the geographic coordinate system, WGS 1984, and then the Lambert conformal conic, the Web Mercator, and the Albers on it, projection. So with that, uh, we are good to move on to actually creating our layout. So you created a layout in module one, but this time we're gonna create a new layout. And instead of taking any of these sort of standard ones, we're gonna custom, do a custom page size. And we're just gonna make a square that is 10 inches by 10 inches. So 10 by 10. And if you think better in centimeters, you'd rather use metric system. It's easy enough to switch. You go 25.4 centimeters by 25.4 centimeters. As your products just default to inches because it's an American software company. So you click OK. And then you should get a, this layout, nice little square. And we're just going to add in each of these map frames. And then we'll uh, sort out tidying them up in a moment. So what you can do is, for instance, we'll do the uh, WS1984 in the top left. Let's just click it and create one. And then before we put any more in, let's ensure that they're all the same size. So uh, we can go with... It's 25.4 centimeters by 25.4. Let's make each map 11 by 11 and see where that gets us first. Maybe a little small. Let's do 12 by 12. So make this one 12 centimeters, put it in the top left. And then you'll want to insert one for each. So you'll go back to layout and then, uh, sorry, insert map frame. And this time we're going to do web mercator. So we want this one in the top right. Go down, format, size it, 12, 12. Doesn't have to be perfectly laid out, but Arc will try to sort of like auto set this for you. So I want to have maybe a little bit of space in between each of them, but it's not super crucial that they're all perfectly lined up. So now you'll do the 
uh, Lambert in the bottom left. And then one more. Albers can go in the bottom right. So if you're working in inches, right, same idea, just different units. So we've got each of these and they look lined up, but they're all zoomed in to different levels, which is kind of annoying, but it's an easy fix. So for each map frame, right, in this layout view, we've got each of these different map frames, uh, three, two, one, and the original up here, all laid out. So for each of them, if you just go and you right click on the respective layer you want to zoom to, right click on CAN WGS 1984, go zoom to layer, do the same thing for the other ones, and you'll get them all uh, laid out. And it'll auto zoom them to approximately the layer's bounding box. So now that you've got this set up, it's a good time to save. So now that you've got everything laid out and saved, uh, I'll show you how to put on uh, some scale information and some titles for each of the map frames. So we don't need to put a north arrow on these maps because when you're doing a large area that's familiar for your target audience, if north is up, which it is in each of these cases, then you can kind of just uh, get away without putting a north arrow in. If north isn't up or you're doing a small area that people or an area that people aren't familiar with, it's generally a good idea, but we can get away with not doing it here. But we're dealing with four different map projections. Each of them is going to then have a slightly different scale. So we do need to put that information. So I'm going to show you two different ways to describe the scale on a map. There's something called scale text. So if you select a given map frame and then go to dynamic text and click on the scale button, you can click and drag down here and you'll see the scale text will pop up. I want to make it a little bigger. And you go to text symbol to change the font size. So it should be under appearance. And you can probably go with, say, like 18. Apply, and that's big enough to read. So if you just try to dynamic text, insert another scale box and do it for this Web Mercator one, you will notice that the scale text is actually uh, exactly the same. So I'll make the font size a little bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. You'll notice that this scale is exactly the same as this one. And so that's because you had uh, this one's still selected when you added this scale text. So if you want to edit this after the fact, it's a little bit annoying. Uh, if you need help with it, you can click this button, help with dynamic tags, and this window pops up with a little explanation of how these tags work. Uh, but I'll just show you what to do. So uh, if you click scale, this window pops up and it says map frame under this name. Map frame is the first one that we put in, right? This one. Map frame one is the second one we put in. So if you just click this text item, which you could also find right here, click scale. If you just put space one in here, that will update. Now, the easiest way is to just make sure that the layer is clicked before you go ahead and insert anything. So if you click on the one in the bottom left, uh, then you can go dynamic text, insert scale, and you don't have so much to worry about. It should already be selected for you. And you'll see the scale is different, change the font size, and we'll do the last one for the Canada Albert. Note that these two are very, very similar because these two projections also look very similar. You can tell some difference. The conformal conic projection is designed to do a good job maintaining shapes. So when you look at the very top of Canada, Ellesmere Island, for instance, it looks sort of the way it looks on a globe with the Canada Albers projection, which is designed to preserve area. Uh, the You can see Ellesmere up here looks just a little bit scrunched, but most of it looks pretty similar. And then you can see comparatively with the Mercator projection how everything is way stretched out and the scale is way different. And that's because the Mercator projection is only true to scale at the equator and north and south of the equator, everything's way stretched out. Um, and then 
And there's a brief explanation of that in the short Vox video that I assigned for module one. And then in the WGS coordinate system, because this isn't a projection, this is just geographic coordinate system, everything looks scrunched. And that's uh, sort of the opposite reason. Uh, so this actually isn't projected at all. And this data is actually just being displayed in degrees, latitude and longitude, which is a spherical coordinate system. And when you try to plot a spherical coordinate system on a 2D plane, you get this weird scrunched look uh, because it doesn't account for the fact that the meridians actually converge uh, as they get close to the pole. So now we can go ahead and insert a scale bar for each map just to show there's multiple different ways to do scale. So when you select scale bar, there's a whole bunch of different options, either imperial or metric. We always want to go with metric unless we're working in either like the US or Liberia or sometimes England. I think they use the metric or the imperial system. But anyway, in Canada, we measure distances in kilometers. So I like to go with the simplest one. There's a whole bunch of ornate options, but I usually just go with single division. And then you can put this down here and set it to whatever uh, size you want. Uh, 2,000 kilometers, for instance, maybe that's a good option. And so uh, same idea here with this one. When you click on it, it'll tell you which map frame it's associated with. So right, map frame one is actually this one, map frame two, this one. So again, this uh, spherical coordinate system, the scale is actually kind of meaningless because again, this isn't projected. So none of this actually works here. And you can tell just looking at the map here, how scrunched everything is, it doesn't actually work. But we're still gonna put the scale on just for comparison sake. So now we'll do one for the Mercator. And they don't have to be perfect, but try to make them say approximately the same size. And then uh, one for the other two. So say you notice how the text here is uh, covering uh, or inter interfering with some of this other label text and you want to make this stand out a little bit, you could go to border and give it a thin black border and you could go to background and give it a white background if you want. And that makes it pop out a little bit more. So you could do the same thing for each of them. Not essential, but stylistically, perhaps a good choice. Now that we've got all this scale information set up, we're gonna put some titles on the map. So this dynamic text option that we use to uh, insert the scale has a whole bunch of different options. You can uh, say, insert the name of the map if you want. So if we've selected this WGS 1984 and we go dynamic text, we can insert the name of the map up here. So this is one way you could insert a title. I don't really like how it goes like name of map, but if you want, you can just delete that and then change the font size to 18. The nice thing about this method is that if you change the title of a given map frame, say you want to put a space in here that automatically updates. So you can use this method uh, if you want to add titles to all of your maps. Um, <clears throat> but I actually generally prefer to just go with like a text box, click and drag, and then you can just manually edit the text there. So I prefer this because it's a little more flexible. This one, if you accidentally delete map name, it's hard to get it back. And I find the formatting to be fairly clunky. Where you see these text boxes, while you have to update everything manually, I think it usually works out a little better. So uh, <clears throat> I suggest you do it manually, but you can use the dynamic text if you prefer. So we just wanna name each map, uh, according to its projection. So this one is the web Mercator, and the title font should be larger than any other font on your map. So let's go with 24. 
And so the text boxes are easy to work with. They're not tied to anything. So you can just copy one, paste it, move it to another spot and update the text. So this is WGS 1984. This is nice because you don't have to change the font size manually every single time. This one is Canada Lambert. Make sure that you're labeling these correctly, corresponding to the projections that you used. And this one is Canada Albert. In fact, we might want to be a little more specific and say this is Canada Albert's equal area. And this is Canada Lambert on formal chronic. Because these are two different projections. They look fairly similar. We want to be sort of specific when we distinguish between them. So one last step, we are going to add what's called a gratitude to each of these maps. That's going to show us lines of latitude and longitude. So this WGS 1984, this is a geographic coordinate system. It's not projected. It's already just showing latitude and longitude uh, plotted like it's a 2D sheet of graph paper. So if you hit Graticule, this will auto populate. You'll have a bunch of options, labels, ticks one, ticks two. We don't need any of these. We just want the grid lines. So highlight labels through ticks, and you can just remove them. All we really care about is the grid lines. Now, you'll note that the interval is grayed out. You can't adjust it. But if you go to this tab and you select automatically adjust, what that does is if you zoom in, zoom out, it's going to adjust them automatically for you. But it doesn't work very well. You'll see why in a moment. So just uncheck that, and then you can specify manually yourself. And if you do one, it should set the other. So we'll just go with 50. So now we'll do the same thing for the Web Mercator. Click that one, insert a grid on that. And this is why that auto update doesn't work very well. It thinks, oh, 30 degrees is appropriate here. But it only shows one line of latitude here. So we can delete these. And then we'll set them all to 15. Do the same for the Lambert and the Albers. And now with the 15 degree graticule on these three or four different maps, we can really see the difference, right? So this geographic coordinate system is not accounting for the curvature of the earth when it's trying to plot this 3D coordinate system on a flat 2D plane. So you end up with this really scrunched look up here because it's not accounting for the fact that these parallels or these meridians, the long ones going north, south, they actually converge at the North Pole, right? Um, so you end up with this really scrunched look because it's not applying any mathematical transformation. It's just plotting a 3D coordinate system, degrees of latitude and longitude in 2D. This one, is applying a transformation. What it's doing, as explained in that little box video I assigned for module one, is it's stretching out the distance between each of these uh, parallels. And uh, also still having the meridians fixed so that they don't converge at the North Pole. And what that results in is this big stretch here, but it does maintain a shape. It just really distorts the area. So the conic projections are slightly different. They are designed to work for just one hemisphere at a time, but they are better at accounting for the curvature of the Earth within that region. So you'll note that these, on both of these, these uh, meridians, these lines of longitude, converge at the North Pole, right? They account for that. And you can see that the lines of latitude are actually curved here. So they do a much better job. If you're trying to display the country of Canada, you want to pick one of these two. This one, if you're more going for aesthetics, right, it maintains shape. This one, if you have to calculate area, say population density, right, because you see it distorts the shape a little bit. So there is one more detail that I uh, forgot to cover. This should be included on every map. You want your name 
and the date that it was created. So um, this isn't the prettiest map. Normally you can just tuck your name and stuff down in the bottom right hand corner, but because all of our map area is full except for up here, let's move the WGS information and then just make a new text box and put it up here. Make the font size a little smaller. So again, you always want the title to be like the largest. So let's go with 18 point font. And then for the text, you just want to say uh, who it was created by and the date that it was created. So created by. And now you're ready to save it one last time. And then you can export your map. So we want to call it coordinate system comparison. And you can export it as a PNG or a .pdf or a .jpg. And then upload it to Canvas.